everyone. Here we are with God, aliens, and a cup of coffee. I'm with Larry Warren, my fellow partner in crime, even though oh. we were in law enforcement. Who knows? Uh, he was in security, security yeah. police side of things. Back then, I was not allowed in security police. But I am here also with Michael Stacy Smith. He goes by Stacy. He's a staff sergeant that was at RAF Bentwaters at the same time as I was there and, and also Larry. Uh, so well, our time definitely intersected because he got there in November 1979, right? So he agrees. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm really excited. He, he uh, left the military and uh, was at the rank of staff sergeant, which is something to be said. And uh, and Larry is first class all the way. I went, I'm I'm still the lowest ranking guy. I can you know. <laughs> no, no, he's he's actually my general right now. He's he's got oh, stars no, still in there. I, I love him, uh, and I love Stacy too. Now here's Thank the thing: is that oh. we're all involved in um, Capel Green, and we're all anticipating, and we're excited about it. Um, and I know there are things that we probably should not talk about, yeah. um, but there are things that I think we can talk about and, mm -hmm. and who knows, because I know a lot of people are really, really biting at the bit, um, to learn more. The thing that I find interesting is that listening to many of the, uh, experiencers at RAF Bentwater set. Even though we all saw something identical, we technically saw something very, very unique as for what was out there and what transformed us, how it made us who we are in the sense of, for example, Stacy, you had mentioned you, you had all these numbers, you've got, you know things that, how should you know that? And you're not alone because I have the same thing. Mine happens to be through dreams that uh, takes me on a road to a very specific place in Mexico that I've never been to. Um, so we all have had different things. And then you got Jim Penniston with the ones and zeros and, and, and you got coordinates and all this other stuff. And I finally realized I want to back off on that by saying that it's, a, it's his truth. It's your truth. It's my truth. Um, and what yes, you experienced is something of value. And I'd like you to share, Stacy, as much as you can of what. That's what I tell everyone. I said, people saw things I didn't see, but I saw things that I saw. You know, it happened in November. And the end of November, we went on alert and they put me in a bunker behind the East Gate on Woodbridge. I had an M60 machine gun and, um, it was like two o'clock in the morning, something like that. And the fence line about a hundred yards down, and I saw a glow in the woods. And I said, what is this? And I thought it was somebody with a lantern. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. you know how the Brits said, well, look at our planes. And um, yeah, I got back down to the bunker and the light coming towards me. And uh, when it got to me, it stopped right in front of me. It was a red, orange glowing ball about two feet off the ground, moving on its own. Oh. I called the SRT team to me. They come to me. And uh, um, the black staff sergeant, I wish I knew him. I think it was from day shift. We were on alert then. But anyway, I didn't know him. The black staff sergeant, uh, white senior airman come to me and it was still there they got there they saw it and the sergeant asked me said um uh, what is that i said i don't know you the one with the stripes you tell me and um <laughs> i cocked and locked the m60 it was cocked and locked all i had to do was throw the safety off and pull the trigger and he asked me said is, is that weapon locked and loaded i said yep you want to relieve me right now? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. the airman, he said, I, he said, I'm going to go down. 
uh, he went down about 100, 150 yards and jumped the fence. He said, I'm going to come in and flank it. He said, you got me covered? I said, man, you covered. And wow. as he was coming into it, um, um, he, you could hear him going through the woods. You couldn't hear this object that come through the woods, but um, you could hear him walking, you know. And it was dark. And if you'd have blinked your eye, you'd have never seen it leave. Wow. And that night I, after that, it scared me. Hell, I was a kid. Mm -hmm. then i went and got up in the back of the hangar behind the bunker i said well they know where i'm at so if they come back they're not gonna hit the, they can hit this bunker but i ain't gonna be in it yeah and mm. well wow. honestly i don't remember even getting back when i when i come to i was in the shower in the barracks wow uh -huh. Interesting. Yep. I don't remember turning my weapon in. I don't remember being taken back to the barracks. I don't remember none of it until I was in the shower. And to this day, um, you know, something like that should be burned in your brain. But it was like, oh, well, I just forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. Or something and, um, made you forget about it. You know? They... Well, you had to say, no, I have a lot I can tell. Yep. Yeah. But then wh when, did you, when did you start experiencing some reason in my brain? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. To this day, it still scares me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was recently. And I tell everybody, I, said, I wish I'd never saw any of it. Yeah. That's two of us. Yeah. I wish I'd never saw it. Yeah. any of it yep. and would, the uh, second uh, incident was um, the Christmas when Colonel Halt and them come out that's when I was out there mm -hmm. and it was a lot more than him and him I, and all that. everybody I asked me did you, did you see Larry I said everybody asked me did you see Larry did you see Larry out there I said no I said there was a lot of people out there I didn't see that's right I said but I know Larry I know he was there he was Air yeah. Force Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember but you back. As then. far as me I seeing think. you, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. You know, I didn't see and you. I, that. Uh, the Steens, yeah. the Steens and I, we were on the SRT team that night. We were real short because all the guys. It was right at Christmas, and they were all home on leave with their families and all us single guys. You know, we only had like one guy on ART teams in the Napa. We only had like one guy on them. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was with Adrian. That's how uh, short that we were that I night. I was with Buzz that mm -hmm. night also. Yeah. Do you a lot remember of um, at the East Coast? Was there a lot the of The Steens asked me, he said, Smitty, Smitty, are you going out? Yeah. And I said, nope. And Colonel Halt was mad because we was off base with weapons. And that's they right. put them all in that truck. That's what I babysitted with. Yeah. Well, I, was yeah. One, I was one of the people in the pickup that Lieutenant England was in and Bruce and uh, uh, what's his name? Mark, yeah. uh, whatever. Uh, Long Jero, Stevie was out there, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone went different things, and mm -hmm. Halt went a whole other end of the field. And uh, but yeah, I, I funny enough, uh, Stacy, the uh, I remember you back then. I a C and D flight myself. For some reason, they were finding what, which yeah. I think that night I was on the C, and we. Uh, I don't remember. I was Delta. Uh, we were dead. Yeah, I was, I was assigned to D. But we had they just had, relieved. Yeah, they had me on C with... Uh, uh, we had just relieved that flight. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had just relieved them that night uh, when Colonel Halton and them called them come out. England, 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 whatever. Yeah, um, England. Bruce. But I remember after that, two planes come into Woodbridge, and I was working at the um, CSC at Woodbridge. Everybody, mm -hmm. even Pendleston said, oh, no, there was no control center. Well, I said, bull crap. <laughs> I said, I had to type down blotters. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, you can ask Lieutenant Eglin because he made me retype them because he, he didn't like my grammar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, they had all, uh, Verano was, he wasn't out there that night, but the next day. But I don't remember, and Burroughs was out there off duty, and I'm sure you remember him. 
Uh, but he was off duty. I told. Oh yeah. I told he come in there that night. Um, right. He come in that night. He was in a POV. That's right. With some guy, and I was sitting there in the truck. He said, "Yeah, you remember that?" I said, "Yeah, I know you." Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, "I saw you. You went out there with all them." He was in civvy clothes, uh, winter. I clothes. said, "You come in from the." Wow. You come in for yep. He said, "I said you come in from the front gate and drove all the way to the east gate where I was at." Yeah, yeah, sure did. Yep. Wow. But then that night, I, when um, some guy they posted at the gate. You know, every time you open the gate, you got to have it posted. Mm -hmm. And I don't know him. He was a new guy, brand new, didn't know him. And I was just sitting around my, my truck. I said, well, they ain't going to give me no call. I'm going to sit here and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he went to hollering. Man, he was cussing. What the F is that? What the F is that? What the F is that? And I got out of the truck and said, man, what, what's wrong with you? He said, man, look. And the craft come right across the end of the runway and went into Rendlesham Forest. And I even talked to Colonel Halt. I spoke to him on the phone. And um, his recording says, yeah, we see one coming in from the south. We see a craft coming in from the south. I see it right now. And it was on his recording. And I told him that and said, yeah. Yeah. I, I got that recording out uh, back in 84. I, I, went, I got it in Japan because the Brits were selling it. And I, the Japs bought it. And uh, they said, you want to come to Japan? I said, could I bring my brother? I should have asked for 50 grand, but I, they gave me 500 bucks and they wouldn't let me take my brother. But I got to see Japan and I came out with that tape and I turned it over to, I turned it over to CNN. I wasn't a good business mind, uh, Stace, but uh, I said, hell with that. I took that tape, man, and I gave it to Chuck DeCaro from CNN back in 84. And that's how it got out to the public because the wow. in here they want, they want to monetize everything we went through, you know. Yeah. In yeah. yeah, actually, Colonel Hall actually called me. We spoke on the phone. He, yeah, he had, doesn't call just me had so appendix long. surgery, he said. Oh, no. really? How long he called that? me, me on the phone. Oh, Lord. Um, since I moved back home here, since I retired and got out uh 20 so, but he found 13 you? 14 15 somewhere around oh. yeah mm -hmm. he contacted me we talked on the phone <laughs> i contacted so him too back around 1997 you know when, when it was like i had my awakening when i saw lefty's mm -hmm. gate on netscape and i uh contacted mm -hmm. him because i found out he was living in uh woodbridge virginia and the first thing I said to him, I said, you see oh, okay. the, the correlation, the synchronicity, you live in Woodbridge and all this stuff that affected you happened around Woodbridge, you know, and it was just uh, at RAF Woodbridge. It, it just seemed kind of interesting. He didn't really. Everybody asked me. He didn't really really it. Dots, like I do. But. Everybody asked me. What's that? Yeah. Everybody asked me, said, uh, did you read Larry's book? I said, no, I was there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Good point. Good yeah. Point. Well, that's outdated. Yep. And uh, this, uh, you know, we're all in this film. I could, you know, uh, it's taken a long time. I know that. I didn't sign up for years because, you know, I'm in my 60s. We all are probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, but yep. I know a little more than you guys might is that what is there? is Hollywood level. It's not these things you see on television, which Halt and Penniston, it's, it's way beyond, way beyond all of that. And uh, of course you guys are re actors play you guys also at some parts and uh, for your events that they cover in it. And yeah, that, that, it. that was really cool. And I can tell you is that, and you know- Somebody I told me something. Um, right there at the bunker I was in on Woodbridge, there's a vent there. And um, when we used to run around, you know, us dumb kids, we tried to pull the top off of it. We don't know, didn't know what it was. And then we played war games out there in Reynoldsham. We found another one, one of those vents. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, was that the guy over well? in England, he said, oh, those are just drain, drainage vents. 
Yeah. Was was that part I of said Sparrow? No. Uh -uh. Was that part of Sparrow? Was that part of Sparrow Hawk? That exercise we did when we were yeah we played around the woods. Yeah, we were fought the British. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fought the British. Yep. <laughs> oh, I, I heard I about I, that. I, yeah, I, I thought the British were coming through the through the fence, and I started shooting at them, and then they were like, "Raise up! <laughs> it's us!" And like, oh, oh sorry, yeah, we guys. played that war game out there. We was out there for like a week. Uh, that was fun. That was that was oh, yeah. and I found a Thank vent you. out there in Rendlesham, right? And it was the same vent structure that was right there in front of my bunker, right there on the east gate, right behind it where I was at. And we used to go pry, try to pry it open. It had a lid on top of it. But you <laughs> yeah. can look down in it. No, that's not a drainage vent. No, sorry. It looks like an air vent. I actually saw a video recently of some guys were the one that's out in the woods that you're talking about. That they actually crawled into it, and they they crawled pretty far, but then they hmm. got scared and they stopped. <laughs> Which I, you know, I'm like, yeah, do you really want to go? I you didn't know. know what they were. Yeah, I, I still don't know what they were. It was strange. Very yeah, I, strange. I, 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 I've been out there an awful lot, you know. Over the I live over here, so but not there. I'm hundreds of miles away, but. Uh, they, right. they have a lot of structures from the war, World War II, mm -hmm. where they used to, you know, the, the fuel, somehow they'd hide in the woods or under, but I don't know. I've seen some of these tunnels and things, but they, they seem very war era kind of thing. But um, there's little huts out there, and I guess they used to hang deer up or some kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know. There's a lot of deer out there. You know, World uh, uh, Woodbridge was a World War II crash base for bombers. That's why the runway was so long. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And they, they yep. expanded it even after our time to take the space shuttle. A lot of people yep. don't, in case it came down in Europe. Yep. Is that actually it, a space wow. shuttle? Actual, I didn't yeah, know that. Is, yep, sure yes. is. Yep. It was the European landing sure thing is. for the shuttle if it had to come down this way. Yep. But it never did. And right. they expanded everything. Yep. They gave the Bentwaters of Burger King, which we didn't have. We have the bowling alley. Yeah. And we always bring, everyone brings out that bowling alley. <laughs> good hamburgers. <laughs> they did have good hamburgers. They did. Absolutely. Yeah. And to, and to think it was only up, oh, for, yeah. a couple, Great it was up for what, two decades, not even, and they tore it all down? Well, yeah. they just built it all up and then they shut down in 92. They deactivated. Yeah. I think they did it a little too quick with what's going on over this way in Ukraine and all that with uh, the, the rescues and all that because it, it's going to go hot soon again. I mean, something bad with yeah. us. Yeah. Then, uh, definitely with the shipping lanes, that's going to be probably the cause and effect. So, yeah, and we're right. Well, let you know, when I see the mushroom cloud, I'll send you a message because you'll be next. <laughs> but of course, we, we, a lot of people, <laughs> we, we know. Mutual, okay, mutual the Cold mutual. War is still going on, okay? <laughs> well, it is. And we you remember our base was a oh, first, yeah. strike, oh, a yeah. first strike option for the Russians, our base, that mm -hmm. Waters Woodbridge. And the, the, uh, the thing yep. is, is that. Yes, and the, the, the people nowadays, the kids or people who haven't served in our area, Cold War, is they don't realize there's a thing called mutually assured destruction. So if that idiot in Russia tries with even attack, they're smoked too. So, you know, unless he's that yeah. insane. I hope it doesn't happen before the movie yeah. comes out, Dio. But, uh, no. you know, no. I want to I see either. it. Yeah. I was but curious not, uh, as for who was living in the Folly house, you know, that little house that was out at the end, you know, off base, but it was. You we know, know it's yeah. A, it, yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, it was just so, there's something about it just seemed really kind of creepy. But yeah. on the other hand, being out on East Gate when I first got there, the gate was open 24 7. And uh, when you were out there, you were out there on your, your lonesome. And, right. and so sometimes I'd look out and see the Folly house, see the lights on, and I think, oh, at least they're in the house cozy, you know, kind of made me feel connected to. Yeah. That was a that was an old man, Lori, named Boast, I think. And uh, Dutch Street's done a lot. You know, they did, I was around back in them. Day. So it was an old man. Nowadays, it's a young family 
Mm -hmm. uh, the kids, well, with the movie, they're probably in their 40s now, but they were 10 when we were filming. <laughs> but uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I will throw, it's, you know, we're not getting younger. But the uh, it's a young family and boy, oh boy, <laughs> have they have some, some things happen. They've had some yeah. things happen there. It's a creepy, uh, I, when we were, when I last filmed for the film we're all in, and I was able to obviously be on site, I couldn't see my, yeah, I was one way with you know, me and Bastinza were together at a certain point, but the actor playing him, I, he looked kind of like him than the kid playing me, but I had to leave because my mother was passing away. And yeah, I, I told him, I, I, didn't, I didn't meet your mom, don't blame me. Yeah. <laughs> I told the kid that reenacted me, I said, uh, I don't know your mom, don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> his, he did look kind of like me. His name yep. is Liam. I've never met him, but he's played you. He's played a tree. And he's played every kind of, you know, because oh, listen, there's no, there was no budget in this thing. I know that. And yet it is probably. They asked the me about the M60. Yeah, I, said, uh, yeah, I didn't see they that. They said, why do your hand go on the M60? I said, to keep your teeth from getting kicked out. They said, huh? That's said, right. Yeah, you put your hand <laughs> right. and put your teeth on the M60 when you shoot it. I said, if you don't, it'll loosen your damn teeth. Um, I only fired them. Pendleton told Texas. him, oh, no, he didn't have no M60. I said, yeah, he did. They, uh, he said, only E4 sir. and above could carry M60. I said, oh, so crap. I, tra I, tra we yep. tra I, I, I trained on the him in Campolis like we all did, blowing apart those 50 oh, yeah. drums. Yep. What, what a load of – what's their angle yep. like when Jim says the – nonsensical things. I don't It know. doesn't make sense to me at all. I, 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 guess, I guess it's being detailed. Tim, Tim Eggersick blew him you up. Know. I mean, the same thing with, uh, I mean, you Tim Eggersick blew him up. These people that act like they they, they have the, the sense of authority in their voice. So yeah. they think that people obviously going to listen to them. Like, well, yes, when I was at MOD doing blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you, this is what Bent waters that this is what East Gate looked like back then. You, and you know, I saw a couple of videos. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. No, oh, that's yeah. a new gate. Or that's, you know, it's just like it's all changed why now. They talking to the experiences, yeah. yep. you know. I mean, why don't they, you know, if you want clarification? Well, be, be, because they've been roped into the untrue narrative, and that's what they've been selling to the public since 1992 yeah. when Unsolved Mysteries first did it. I was supposed to be on it and then Holt kicked me off. And Holt has autonomy with all these things. Well, he does it with Capel Green. And they were all invited on. I mean, I didn't want them, but since it democracy, they were all asked, would you? And we had a crew in America that filmed everyone. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, Unfortunately, or fortunately, I, I wasn't down with that idea because I don't owe them nothing and I don't think any of us do. Uh, but uh, they, they chose not to. And I, I, but also there was, uh, other, right, there was another criteria in it. Would they be willing to be polygraphed? And they refused and they still do. And by the top expert in this country and her counterpart in America, they won't do it. I've been, I've passed and I did five VSAs. I knew your ex law yeah. I mean, civilian police, uh, Stacy. And, uh, but they will, yep. you don't need to do it, yep. you, it, but they do because they've been in, uh, inconsistent. They can, they can polygraph me all they want. Well, they don't, you're good. You don't yeah, have I don't to, care. They can polygraph me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. but see, that's not their attitude. No, we shouldn't. Have, yes, you need to. Why should anyone? And listen, it's just a measure. And you're, you're real police outside. You know better than I would. But I've, I put myself up to do it to get the damn movie going. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if I failed it, like, who's going to make a movie with a part of character in it that isn't, you know, legit? And I'm legit. I know I am. I don't know everything. Yeah. I've learned a lot with the film. And I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of it they don't tell me because they think I have a big mouth. Obviously, I got the incident out, the, the, the RFI out in 82. So that that I can't argue. I'm glad you done that. Man. Yeah, um, I, I'm thinking the when same When I first thing. got back stateside. Well, thank you. It was, it was just my so one feeling friend. that you did that, truly. Thank you. Well, I, 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 I told him about that UFO incident, and that came out on Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. yeah he I, called I, me. There have been things on the it man, before that. you said was just TV. Yep. Yeah. There you go. And that's mm -hmm. me. Yeah, that, that to me it says so much more. You know, you all, 
we all need a voice. I, I have had mine for many years, mm -hmm. but my whole thing was to get folks like you guys mm -hmm. to be able to come out. I took all the fireworks, I mean, even from within. And uh, and believe me, it wasn't a plan at all. There's never been money in it, but there was, uh, it had to be done. And everything that's happened to me has happened to Travis Wall. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, but the worst thing is, it's not your government yeah, that needs he contacted me also. Travis? I have his text message. Oh, yep. yeah, he's a nice guy. He's been through mm -hmm. all kind of hell. He can, he can take, yeah. you know, just, yeah. but I'm out looking out for you guys. He's a good man. He's been through the same, Ringer. you know, different, it's always different perceptions. Yep. But that's what it's about to me is that, now here's, there's people say I was never even in the Air Force. I mean, it's stunning. And yeah. all my documents are, I stole Oh, my crap. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh I saw you there. I remember when you <laughs> was at Bravo Napa one night. You was a yeah, brand new right. troop. I and we pulled up, and you was asking me questions. And we were trying to tell you. <laughs> and, and I was, yep. and I was I on. That. I was on Post Eleven right Bravo across Napa. from the from the base of Strains when you came up to me, and we talked for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, you were on the main gate of Bentwaters my first yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah. yeah. You. Were you were there. I, I, I know you were there. Everybody says, well, was Larry there? I said, yeah, he was. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They don't, they he don't was like there. that. He part. was in the airfield. <laughs> I remember the Bravo Nap when you was on there on the ECP point. And we pulled it's up like, there well, and we were asking us questions. And we were trying to tell you. You know, you well, know that's me because I talk a lot. My mother wanted yeah. me to go into the Navy, Stacy, and I kind of, I'm seasick on a duck pond, but I wish I had, you know? Well, you know what's funny <laughs> is, is that I went to, <laughs> yeah. I, I actually registered <laughs> for the School of Visual Arts in um, June of 1977, and I got there, and they didn't have dormitories or anything like that, and my mom said, which is so like me, well, let's make a day out of being in New York City. Let's go to the Statue of Liberty. So I got on the ferry and, you know, just the smell of the gas and everything. I started feeling nauseous and because I was thinking, uh, I remember this girl in high school having all these brochures about the Air Force and they looked like flight attendants. I guess I could do something like that. You know, I mean, there's no way I was going in the Army or Marines because, uh, you know, I was anti-Vietnam. Um, I mean, no, you, you have to be a little bit smart to right, get in the Air Force. Right. You have to pass we, we, we did a, a big disservice to our soldiers there and, and the, you know, uh, it was just done in, in, improperly. But uh, yeah, but I was anti-Vietnam. I, I was like, we shouldn't be there, blah, blah, blah. But, but that was just me back then. And so the only thing that looked safe was the- My best friend airport. was Green Beret in Vietnam. What's that? No, I totally- One of my best friends was a Green Beret in Vietnam anyone that set foot on that land and what they were doing was important because they were following orders. They were doing what they were told to do. And, yep. you know, it, it was just that, um, yep. he hated it. Yeah. The, the numbers. And anyway, and I'm not he getting into politics, it. but my point is that, is that I never saw myself as a military kind of person. And then when they offered me law enforcement, first they offered me, supply and i'm like i don't want to work in the stock room i was like what that and then they said well well we'll, we'll find <laughs> something in about five days and if you don't like it you could say goodbye to the air force this is what the guy my recruiter said and i'm like fine fine i don't care <laughs> so i he called me back and he said well take a guess i'm like i'm like this is my life can you can you tell me what what you came up with Oh, come on, take a guess. No. I was like, really? No. He said, well, what do you think of law enforcement? And I thought, ooh, ooh you know, Charlie's Angels, you know. <laughs> you know, Starsky and Hutch. You know, I thought, oh, this is really cool. I'll, I'll be jumping over cars. I'll have my gun out. I'll be, you know, you know, I don't know. I don't know what, you know. Charlie's Angels. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> And I was not near any bases. Well, I was a real I, I grew up on Long Island. Uh, so the, my frame of reference for the military was the television show MASH. And I always thought they had a great sense of humor. So, yeah. But that was, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, that was, I, I joined, in the Navy. I joined I because my dad, 
you know, that actually like, includes B-36 bombers. Yeah. In the Air Force. And my uncle was a chief master sergeant that retired. And I went in. There wasn't no job in 79. That's when Jimmy Carter was president. Right, right. And, you know, to get in the Air Force, you have to take that test. And you got to pass high to get in the Air Force. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there were a lot of, there were definitely a lot of smart people in security police for sure. A lot of, a lot of the airmen that saw a lot of the bullshit that was going on, you know, uh, you know, getting aggravated oh, yeah. up with it. It was just, yeah. you know, you know, I, I always felt like I lost a friend yeah. whenever somebody I want decided truth they wanted to. Leave. That's all I want the truth. Tell the truth. What's that? That's what I told Dion when they contacted me. I said, I just want the truth to come out. I don't want money. Yeah, yeah. There's no Here's money. The the only, what I know. The only, what happens? The only people that make money are the Nick Popes and people like him, and mm -hmm. and even co-authors. Some of them that are disingenuous that have no qualms in lifting whatever. And mm -hmm. you know, I flip more in to this than I'll ever see. I don't care about that. But uh, yeah, it's the truth. It's it's just the truth. Nope. As we know it, I think you're you're going to be very shocked, guys. <laughs> and I don't know everything with. The result of this film, I know it's going to flatten UFOlogy, whatever they call that bunch, but it's made for the world. It's not made for that type. And they'll either enjoy it or they won't. They'll probably right. pretend it isn't out because it's not going to make them look very uh, good in the investigation end. Uh, it's not good, and it, not intentionally. There's no disparaging of people, but I'll tell you guys, can be very proud of this thing. And yeah. uh, may we, you know, hopefully very soon there's a couple things that i'm aware of separate from that that you're going to be very uh, pleased with soon you're going to be very it's about time Good. yeah yeah well, well I, I, I won't, it's I time that. man yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah i agree with that yeah i i i do too that's I what i told them. dion it's time for it to come out yeah. yes yeah well, and it's uh it's time for it to be told it happened yeah. And nobody can take it from us. Yeah. No. Yeah. And they'd like and, to. And it, and it really changes the dimension of the whole and it's story. It's way more than what you might think. Mm -hmm. It's bigger. I, there's things I didn't even know, which, yeah. of course, that would be the case. But, you know, I'm closer to all that because mm -hmm. I'm over here and them. And it, uh, you'll be very, uh, your day is coming. And let me tell you, your, your day is coming in a couple different directions. Well, uh, Neither have any. Dion told me other. that um, since Lori and I spoke, since Lori and I spoke and they interviewed us, they said a lot of guys and gals have come out. Yes. Have kept their Many. mouth shut. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. I think it's going to be all because of me. Because of me and Lori. Really? Or was it the yep, other Lori? Me and Lori. Yeah, I, I just was so. <laughs> I remember you, well, girl. I got a photograph of you. Sure do. Yeah. I got a picture of you in my files. Okay. Yep, when you were standing on the gate at Bentwaters. Wow. Yep. I must have looked younger than I am now. Yep, still do. <laughs> That's how I met oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were. We all were. <laughs> we all were. <laughs> were pretty bad, oh, yeah. Yep. I, I'll tell you, though, when I left Bentwaters, I felt like I, I escaped there. <laughs> you know, I really did. I, I was so angry and so, right back. you know, okay. And I, I just felt so um, I did. I wanted to like put it all behind me and, and just go forward. You know, I'm going to a new base. So you know, whatever happened over in England, it's it's back then, and maybe I'll have fond memories of my time there. And and see, I stayed in to include my reserve time for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And Bentwaters was the worst mm -hmm. assignment that I ever had. And I'm not talking about the people that I became friends with. But I'm talking about you know, it was just everything was so off, off kilter. And, and so, I mean, every base I went to, I'm like, no, that one is still a really shitty base, you know, I'm like, and, and it was just, you know, cause I felt like it was physically changing me in so many ways. And, and it was just, uh, I, I mean, my mom came to visit me when I was there I would, uh... and she walked right by me. She didn't even recognize me. I'm like, mom, it's me. Huh. And, and, and the first thing, and I'll tell you this, the first thing that happened is that when I 
my mom came to visit me. It was closer to the end of my time there, about May of 19, um, May of 1980. And she came to visit and I went to pick her up at Heathrow and she walked right by me and I kind of had to say, hi, mom. You know, and she, she was like, oh, oh, Lori, Lori. And then uh, and we got on the base and, and now I'm trying to at least show off, you know, I'm trying to show off saying, oh, well, this is this and this mm -hmm. is that. You know, uh, it's kind of like, see that pipe in the road? Isn't that wonderful? Right. You know? And and my mom was just really quiet. I mean, she, I would point out, and then we had to stop the car to let an A10 drive by. And, you know, I thought maybe she'd think that was kind of cool, like how things were mm -hmm. working here, you know? And she kept quiet. And then she started saying, right. she finally said, Lori, I can get you an airline ticket. I got to get you out of here. I, you there's something wrong here. This place is something really, really, really wrong here. And it's dangerous. And I got to get you out of here. And when she said that, I was thinking she feels it too. You know, I mean, she, you know, and, and it was, it was kind of like, um, yeah. So she, uh, she wanted to get off the base as quickly as possible. And I took her back to my flat in Wickham market and, uh, it was pretty cold there. We finally went to visit a friend of mine who lived in this really sweet little um, apartment over in, um, it was called Corner Cottage. And my mom wanted to stay there. She was like, I don't want to go back to your place because there's something's wrong at your place too. And I'm like, okay. You know. <laughs> but, um, but she made me curtains and, and made yeah, it really nice and, you know. Um, I, yeah, it was it was just really interesting, but it blew me away that my mom and even even before she passed away and she couldn't talk. If I mentioned Bentwaters, my mom would go like this. Oh, 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 yeah, now my family you, and you, knew, you knew she was like she's like that. There's something wrong there. That place is evil. And it was she felt like it was whatever it was, was attacking us or attacking me. And, you know, um, I think my, I think my family shake their heads when the name comes up. So what's that? Oh God, not again. Yeah. The lighthouse became a family <laughs> friend. <I> mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. There was just nothing. Oh, going uh, down. Lighthouse. Yeah. They yeah, talk about yeah. that. Yeah. They I, talk about that on the UFO stuff. And I said, look, we play war games in those woods. I said, I had a map and was looking for the lighthouse to try to get my bearings. <laughs> I said, yeah. no, the lighthouse you don't shine in the forest. Sorry. No, it doesn't. That's exactly right. No, you can't. Yeah. I tried to find it yeah. when we was out there laying in the woods. <laughs> you can't find it even if yep. you try. Now it's, yeah. now sure it's, it now it's gone. Yeah, yeah. They tore it, they tore it down. They could yeah. have sold bricks of that. You know, the UFO, yeah. it was all like, Ken Green and was that's with just, who? What's that? Ken Green. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was yeah. with me when we was out there playing them games. They sent us on alert, four mm -hmm. guys. And why they picked me, I don't know. They always pick me to do that crap. But um, I guess oh, so I went oh, to you're um, you're about when ABGD you went to like or what? Yeah. yeah you guys it. had the opportunity. Yeah, to we were playing war games. Right. Yeah. I missed the yeah. war games, but I remember you would coordinate in front of the theater when we'd show up with alert bags and get on the blue bus to go out to the yeah. uh, the, uh, yeah. the CSC. And you were, weren't you the coordinator of yeah. for flight on who has what with them, when, and this and that for the new ones. Yeah, I remember that yeah. very well. Yeah. Wow. Fly very long. Wow, but, they put yeah. me in charge of all that crap. I don't know. Yeah. I, well, you, you got the short time we, um <laughs> Even on um, Lieutenant Eglin, they picked me one night when we played war games. They made me attack the base. We had <laughs> stickers to put on planes, you know, destroyed. Yeah. Lieutenant Eglin done that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He went back. Yeah. They had this thing where. And I grabbed yeah. his leg when he came by me and he scared him to death. <laughs> I said, yeah. you're dead. They had this thing where if, if you thought the enemy was near you, you had to say a number or something, or if you thought, you, you know, to figure out who was friend or foe when you're out there. And this guy no, and I, uh, Authentication. 
Well, they yeah. ask you uh, mostly your last name, and they'll ask you a son of cake by three. Yeah. And you well, say Smith, S M I, India. Yeah. Well, I, I they told me and this guy to uh, leave the woods, leave the forest, and head up to the uh, N NMSA uh, where we were all climbing on on those mounds and. We're walking in the woods, and all of a sudden, I oh God, stop. Not them a lot. Yeah, I, I stop, and I turn around, and I do this authentication, and then this guy, who's maybe about three, four feet away, he does the authentication back to me, and he, uh, the guy who was with me, said, hmm. "How did you know that? How did you know that?" And I said, "I felt it. I just felt him there. You know, I don't. Know. It was just, you know, it just hit me." But you know, it was always like that. It, you know, yeah. there. Then we got to the. Then we got to the bunker, and that's when it was like the end. It was like the the crescendo. You know, it's like okay, you use up your all your bullets. And uh, and I should not have gone chasing after <laughs> Lieutenant England when he was in that jeep with the with the machine gun on the back, because then he started shooting that, and it, and the sounds yeah. were echoing on both sides of those cement walls. And all of a sudden, my ears were going, uh, and I'm like, never mind. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I miss the war games. Yeah. I, I think they happened just before my group got there. You know, uh, yeah. I had heard about it, and they had tanks. Mm -hmm. Didn't they have tanks in the forest and all that? I don't I, know. I, I, don't, I don't think so. The only I saw, thing I saw no tanks. No, I don't remember a tank. Um, yeah. Well, I don't remember yeah. a tank, but I remember yeah, I think um, I saw they did have there. Jeeps out there. Them. You know, you know what? I, I remember I me and that. Ken. We were on the alert. We had to find their um, base camp, and we hadn't had nothing to eat in a while. And we crawled up right in the middle of their damn camp. I called in an airstrike, <laughs> and um, I smell them. They were cooking food. I told Ken, I said, "I'm tired of this, man." I said, "This ain't for real. I'm hungry. I smell food cooking." And I stood up. Boy, the British went crazy. Uh, he was looking at my M16. I said, you can have that damn piece of shit. <laughs> I said, here, give me something to eat. <laughs> yep, sure did. Well, so, yeah, they gave us those, yeah. uh, those old World War II um, T-Rats. And, and you had to open up and you saw the yeah. date. It said 1944 on it. And you're opening it yeah. up. And it's still got my P-38. Yep. Yeah. I yeah, still got I, my original P-38 from the first wow. one when I was in the SP school. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Wow. I think I have mine, too. Isn't that funny? Ken was there with me. <laughs> well, I talked to him and yeah. when we crawled up in the British camp. And um, <laughs> I stood up. I said, I'm quitting, man. Hell with this. I'm hungry. I remember they kept saying... Uh, the Brits went crazy. Their captain yeah. came up there. How did you get in here? How did y'all do this? How did I told him. I said, we crawled right by your damn post. <laughs> the British are coming. No, well, you know, in a, so an you can have that damn piece of crap. <laughs> they had an excuse going around in the press over here, fit guys, that uh, said the SAS fooled us during those nights in question, and uh, and I go, listen, they they would have been smoked in in, in seconds. They tried to undermine our oh, yeah. training. Yeah. The British, the British try to make it like mm -hmm. we're just wayward. Who are, where are we? Uh, numbskulls. And then I realized we were trained to oh. repel Alpha Team Ooh, Spitz yeah. Nets, you know, yeah. in lethal force. They, you know, yep. it, it just wouldn't have happened. But they'll come up with anything. A police car confused us because we're dumb Yankees. You remember that yeah. kind of angst and all that? Yeah. Um, but I would yeah. say, that I would say, and I often yeah, do, no, uh -uh. Ne Sorry. never. Never call my southern brothers Yankees because you might be missing some teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I was born and raised. Yep. <laughs> Actually, yep. True. You don't, that's you don't true. call you uh, yep. a Yankee. No. Even though yeah, I'm and all the guys that live up there in New York now, they still live up there. They... No. Yeah, I stayed in fights when I was there. Yeah, I think they're trying to move out of that state now, but yep. that's another thing. That's Mr. Well, I won't. Well, I'll tell I actually you, you had to pay you, 600 bucks to get a guy's teeth. Yes, yeah, Stacy, you, <laughs> you were talking about, you know, the smell club of, one night. you were talking about the smell of food, you know, and you 
had to you had to get something you were hungry. My first mm-hmm. job as a platoon leader in the in the army in army reserves was uh, to be in charge of a bakery platoon. <laughs> and I would go up to this commander oh, okay. and not, not, let me get this right. I got to make bread. I got to get my mm-hmm. troops to make bread out in a war zone. And I said, do I make extra for the enemy? If they come, they, they smell, it smells good. They want to- <laughs> it's kind of crazy because <laughs> it might, might have been the last of the few bakery platoons, yeah. but <laughs> we kill people and bake bread is what our, our motto was. <laughs> When I come back stateside, they sent me to Ellsworth Air Force Base. I spent two years there in South Dakota. Ellsworth? Yeah, after Bentworth, yeah. And then I spent two more years in the reserve. Yeah. Six years total. So Ellsworth, where was that? um, No, it went to Ellsworth. Oh, was it Montana? South Dakota. Rapid okay. City, South Dakota. Yeah. No, I mean, was, South Dakota. It was, Rapid City, sergeant, South Dakota. It was a sergeant at Bentwaters so that got orders back to uh, uh, Minot. And he said, I quit. I quit. I'm out of here. Yeah, and they're like, oh. he said he had done it like yeah. three or four times. It's like Minot, Bentwaters, Minot, Bentwaters. And he's like, I'm fed up with this. <laughs> All these people are going to some great places. And what am I doing? I'm going back to Minot. Like, oh God, which, uh, yeah, coldest damn place ever been in my life. I bet oh, I'm a yeah. southern boy, I ain't used to that cold. <laughs> my first first winter up there, I got there, it got down to 70 below wind chill. Oh, my God. wow, keep that. When I first got there, they issued you all this uh, parkas and gloves, gloves that come up to your elbows, mittens. I said, well, hopefully the gate checks. I found been. out. Yeah. Wow. So I, I, got I worked one, in the missile field. Yeah. I got one question for you. We had um, missiles and bomb. It was a bomber wing and a missile wing. We had over 10,000 troops there. Damn. Wow. Stacy. They closed the missile field down. It's closed now. That's good. Yep. Stacy, I have a question for you. The. Um, <laughs> You, you mentioned something about sharing numbers with, I think, your brother or somebody who's an engineer. Um, is that something you can talk about? My brother's an engineer. I, I gave him, I gave him uh, some numbers a couple of years ago, and he watered them up and threw them in the trash. He gave uh, one of the guys over there that's working with Dion, I ain't going to say his name. I give him some numbers. Okay. And um, he had a professor look at them. And um, he said, do you know what this is? I said, no. He said, these are GPS coordinates. I said, from what? He said, from Rendlesham Forest to Mount St. Michael's. Oh, okay. Okay. I think I remember hearing yep. about that. And, uh, and I bet there's yep. what, high, high UFO activity said, there? Yeah. Now, now, Larry, are you near Bristol by any chance? Is that close by you? Who, me or Stacy? You. It's not, no. Oh, no. I, 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 I'm in Liverpool. Uh, yeah, up, yeah. Way up north in the northwest of England, above Wales and, you know, below wow. Scotland. But we're, we're, way, we're on the Irish Sea, so Belfast, uh, Belfast would be right across the Irish Sea. Wow. From us. Or, uh, yeah, so we're, we, uh, in fact, the Sea Link, you know, the Beatles are from here. I'm, I, I live in Liverpool. Yeah. I live kind of close to where Ring, right now where Ringo uh, grew up and was born, and um, and Jerry Marsden and all them. They're from this neighborhood, but the oh. um, I don't want to give too much information away because there's lunatics over here. But the um, yeah, now Bristol's on the south <laughs> the south coast, and, oh, okay. uh, and believe it or not, you guys know how it is here in the summer. Well, we had a hundred and five degrees Fahrenheit. <sighs> I heard you know, yeah. last week, and you know, there's still no air conditioning over here, guys. Did you remember back in our day? Yeah. I mean, I, I used to, and they, they've gotten a little more. Oh, water. Yeah. oh, it was bad last week. Two days, I thought I was dead. I'm not used to heat it, but England doesn't get 105 degrees, and we did. And I'm in a city, so it was it was really. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, 
Yeah, you, you would think Mount St. Michael's on the southwest coast of England. Mount St. Michael's. Right. I didn't know where it was, but I told the guy. I've, I've, I've never heard of it. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I told him I about the buildings and everything. Really? And um, actually, they don't even know who built those buildings. They're so old. They think oh, the Romans right, did. I said, I don't think the Romans went that far. Oh yeah, they they own they the Romans occupied mm -hmm. all of that all the way up here to Hadrian's Wall, and uh, Liverpool had uh, 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 a lot of Spanish came in here. A lot of that it was invaded by Vikings and the, but the Romans. Many of the roads you drive on up in the north were Roman roads originally, and in fact they're not much better still. But, <laughs> but but no, they still are here. And uh, see, I'm very, I'm glad I didn't get any of the buildings. Some of you. you. You're glad what now, Larry? I told him the building, what it looked like. And um, I told him, I uh, said, go take a GPS compass, take a compass with you. Dion, I told him, he went there. And I said, uh, you can take a compass, but it's not going to work. How do you know this? I said, I do not know. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the back corner of the building on the eve, and take a compass reading north northwest and um i said but your compass isn't gonna work he wow. contacted me back said you were right that's wow. mad yeah i didn't know any and, of that um, hmm. well i know that, i know um, like, Pennington, supposedly you know, like computer I... stuff shows um an island and i told him the compass heading headed right toward where penniston's uh, thing is Brazil. And the guy that I told to give the numbers to said, I'm going to eat my damn hat, man. I just did my job. I think it was to get it out, but I, I'm glad I didn't get any of these numbers and things, yeah. especially with my skills in math. I mean, they I, wouldn't bother with me. Yeah. Oh, you'd be surprised. I'm no math guy. I don't know what these are. My me brother either. is. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, my whole family. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> two plus two, yeah. that's about it. Yeah, two plus two, that's about it. Yeah. That's that's getting up there for me. I, <laughs> and yeah, I give that guy, I ain't going to mention his name, but he's he's part of the film. You yeah. know him. Yeah, I, I, I might know who you mean. That's, uh, we, we, we're all not supposed to talk about it too much. <laughs> right, right. Right, we have non disclosures, but I yeah. don't know everything. Yeah. And yeah. You guys know more than I do. I just did my little thing. Yeah. And I think it's going to be just, uh, it's going to be an eye opener for me, you know, yeah. and for, but it, it's closure for a lot of, a lot of good folks and uh, families, families also. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, everybody, I don't want this. I wish I'd never seen none of it. Too, it'll open up the dialogue to, to those, uh, those experiencers who That's right. really need to get, their voice heard. I mean, that to me is where I'm at. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it's kind of like feeling like you're compelled to take a mound of potatoes and make it into a, an odd looking mountain that uh, Rich Dreyfus did on Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know, I took some, I took mashed potatoes and made a statue of Colonel Holt out of them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really go with, it's so funny because, you know, I don't really remember him. Um, I, I remember the first time I met Major Drury. And oh, yes, Carl. Yes. He, he was brand, he was brand Oh, Drury, good God. He, he went uh, out he to was tough, man. Was oh, out, man. And um, he told us if we did that and we um, passed everything and done good, we would not have to be involved in the alert, the NATO Tacker Valley anymore. Well, the next day he come out, wanted us to do it again. We were standing there in formation, all of us. Hell no, we ain't going. Hell no, we ain't going. And even Sergeant Ball was there. He said, "You told oh, these boys, yeah. Robert Ball. Well, they're going, they're going to do it again." And we all said, "Yeah, yep." Yeah. And uh, he said, "Hell no, they're going to do it again." Well, anyway, he come up there to CSC one day in his little POV. Somehow, two dead rabbits got thrown in his car. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, those, those poor rabbits. Yep, sure did. Airfield maintenance used to shoot them. <laughs> they? Well, there's rabbits everywhere on vent borders and wood There's rabbits everywhere, yeah. 
Yeah. I saw, I saw. And two I dead saw rabbits got thrown in, thrown in the seats of his car. He, he was hard work, for Carl Drury and uh, Major Drury and uh, Ziegler, you know, and I got along kind of with them, but Ziegler was a CIA guy. I didn't know that. He was a, attached. He had a secondary yeah. with CIA for real. And uh, Burroughs found that. He out. was all right. I don't know why we had two majors. Hey, guys, your day of reckoning is coming. Uh, I'm on it all the time to the point where I'm annoying to them. Uh, not for me. I mean, it's just, it's coming where we can speak openly and and as we should be able to. And just just hold fire and let's just make fun of people we served under some of the offices. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be the fun part. No, it's your show, Lily. I, what what uh, else? But well, I, 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 that, you know, one of the reasons I, I became an officer, too, is because of the way I was treated, you know, uh, mistreated at, at Bellwater. I said, I'm better than this. You know, I'm better than this. And, and you know, so I had to, you know, get my degree while I, and I did it while I was on active duty. Uh, yeah. You know, so, you know, it took me four years. I got mine, finally. Huh? I have mine. Yeah, you still yeah. do the exam to be in a tournament. Yeah, there you go. There Took you me go. years, but oh well. Yeah, so I went to the DC National Guard. It was like a rope around my waist and dragging me around the base. But you know, <laughs> got my got my gold bar, and that was you know, that was cool. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. Part. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it adds for credibility, you know, because that I, was one thing I felt like I didn't have when I was at Bentwaters, you know, who's going well, to listen? Look at me, look at me, Lori. I mean, I I left Airman first class. I was a six year wonder that didn't work out. Uh, not my fault. And uh, so they always are going to go with the higher, you know, what is an airman? I just know what I went through and what I can remember. And yeah. but yeah, the rank really makes even if it's not in the good light, mm -hmm. like certain yeah. people with agendas, officers, but it does have right. the weight. I, it's just the way people's heads work. Of course it does. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like they always say, class. it was a different yeah, I, made staff, I made staff in under four. I took the test and I, passed it and didn't realize I good, passed right? it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's my line good. number was late. Uh, I got out and went reserves before my got promoted to staff. But um. Went to reserve unit, and they right. weren't going to give me yeah. my staff sergeant strap. I said, "Oh hell, no, you are." Yeah. <laughs> I said, "We got enough staff." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I have to say, I, I, I really, I really appreciate having this conversation. I think uh, we've covered a lot of material, and it was just once again a wonderful conversation. I think it it'll benefit a lot of folks out there to get some interest in, yeah, we got to see this film, Capel Green. And and it, it just adds to the excitement. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. Everybody yeah, here is ready for are. it. Everybody around me that lives around me and knows me says, man, when's it coming out? Yeah. And you know, Stacey, it's, Stacey, it's, it's great to, to talk to you and see you after all these years. I do, we do have messages, but it really is. Oh, you yeah. haven't aged. You've aged pretty well, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't feel it, man. I'm, I feel like I made it. <laughs> got a real bad heart condition. Oh, I know, I know. I'm bad. blessings, but day of reckoning's coming. You, you, you're gonna, you'll be on Tiger Beat magazine soon. Win a dream date with Stacy. Just like that movie Stripes. Remember that? <laughs> we heard, we heard the time yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Larry, Larry, we'll be eating uh, double dogs, right? And uh... double dogs, <laughs> Nathan's. Oh, yeah. wonderful! I just oh, want to tell I, the I, truth. That's all I well, want. To do. I, well, I'd like to go ahead and thank my that, guests, that's all I want. Um, Staff Sergeant Michael Stacy Smith, also known as Stacy Smith. And my my co That's cohort, me. Larry Warren, who uh, was an airman first class. <laughs> he was he was first class all the way. Yes, I, and, I uh, bet they say I I just sewed those. Don't matter. Along. You were there, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. And, yeah, yeah and you. I'm a major pain in the ass sometimes. <laughs> Lori, wonderful. <Wonderful>. Uh, <laughs> 
No, you will always be my Lori. Aww. I got a picture of you standing at Bentworth Gate. Oh, sure do. I, yeah, I think I think the spirit of me, my my younger self, is still out there, okay. wondering why my feet are still cold. <laughs> <laughs> cold. Yeah. All Everybody right. Everybody asked me. Well, thank said, you That's again. Lori right there. That's Lori. Yeah. Well, thank nice, you again guys. for for joining us, and we shall have another discussion at a future date. And this is God Aliens and a cup of coffee. I hope you enjoy your cup of coffee too. So bye-bye. I love you guys. Love you too. Bye-bye. Blessings. Bye -bye. Blessings.